David is a person who grew up without a good family support, who grew up in the field, in the wilderness, also in the field amongst the animal. David is one person who was just depending on God only. Uh, David is one person who was almost a last born, but in a, in a very dynamic way. So things were not so much easy for David. One time he was inspired to pray by Holy Spirit, and he went on to God and said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. I shall fear no one. The Lord is my strength, the strength of my life. I shall fear no one. He said, even when the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they will stumble and fall. They will stumble and fall. The reason he was saying to eat up my flesh is because he fought a bear and he fought a lion and he conquered that. You know, so David's enemies were not people only. It included animals and he conquered that he's praying so this prayer is also a testimony prayer is also a worship prayer is also a reflective prayer is also a, a glorifying prayer of the lord so david prays and he continues and say though an army may encamp against me remember in ziglak he was if he was conquered and he went back to reclaim he says my heart shall not fear even when people are about to stone him he, he was once um, faced with a situation to be stoned by his own armor bearers and all that because their wives and children were taken away he says though an army may encamp against me my heart shall not fear why though war may rise against me in this i will be confident why one thing I have desired of the Lord. He does not say one thing I will desire of the Lord. He says the thing that caused me to experience what I'm talking about now is that from the beginning, I desired that the Lord must be my foundation. The Lord must be my basis. The Lord must be my only option. He says I kept on seeking the Lord and I kept on dwelling in the house of the Lord for the days of my life and I was beholding on his beauty and inquiry in his temple. Therefore, when the army arises against me, they were arising against a servant of the Lord. When an army arises against me, they were arising against against God. When the wicked came against me, they were coming against God. When anything that will cause me to fear was coming against me, it was coming against God. When anything was attacking me, it was attacking the strength of God. Why? I was already under God. I was already under God. I didn't wait for after effect, before the trouble came, I was already under God. Before uh, uh, struggles came, I was already under God. Before the accident comes, I was already having insurance. Before and before and before, God was already before God was already, David is praying and his prayer is a celebration of what God will do to somebody who has prioritized God. He says, before these things befell me, my God was already my God. I had so thought, sought my God and his righteousness and I knew that all these other things shall be added upon my life. I I, I pray in my heart that someone can step into this kind of lifestyle where you pray even before things happen because things are not happening when they happen. Before the things happen, God must have already manifested his lordship, his might, and his power. So this is what David was praying about in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So today I want you to understand. He continued to say, uh, for in time of trouble, listen to this, he shall hide me in his pavilion. So if you know English, you will realize that he is not in trouble now. He's testifying to God. He says, for in time of trouble, my God will hide me under his pavilion. He continues to say, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon the rock. It has already happened as I move towards conclusion and he says, and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy to his, in his tabernacle and I will sing yes and I will sing praises to the 
Lord. Hear me, O Lord, when I cry with my voice and he have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, your yes, Lord, I will seek. So he's telling you things that characterize his behavior. He continues to say, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away from, I mean, in anger. You have been my help. Can you hear this? You have been my help. Not you are my help. You have been my help. You know, you have been my help. So even now, do not leave me nor forsake me. Oh, God of my salvation. Even now, my father, do not forsake me nor leave me. Oh, God of my salvation. L listen to him describing what I said before I started. He says, even though Jesse and my mother may forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. This young, this man was never taken care of properly by the parents. You might be here today, you've never had a good upbringing. I want to say to you, even though the upbringing was tough, there is a God who takes care of people like you. If you could do it for David and did it for me, he can do it for you. And then I'm concluding the prayer. David prays and says, when my father and my mother forsook me, the Lord will take care of me. Verse 11, he says, teach me your way, O Lord and lead me in a smooth path. This is the guy who wrote Psalm 23 when he says, I walk beside still waters. I, he make me lie down in greener pastures. Here he says, teach me how to walk, you know, and lead me in smooth path because of my enemies. And he says, do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witness has arisen against me and such as breath or out of violence. Uh, they are breathing violence against me. He says, I will have lost heart. He says, because I know my God, I can't be disappointed. I can't be discouraged. I can't give up. But he says, if I didn't know God, I will have lost heart unless I had believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And in conclusion, he signs off by saying, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So verse 14, it's an advice to all of us from King David, Psalms 27 verse 14 to say, if God could do it for me, hold on, he will also do it for you. In Jesus' name of Nazareth, mighty God, I pray and I encourage all of you, hold on to God. He will do it for you. Be of good courage like Joshua was told. He will do it for you. To God, everything matters. Don't dwell into that which is causing you to have pain. God will take your pain away and manage it. Just be of good courage and wait upon the Lord. The God of David is our God today. The God who took care of someone who was neglected by his own biological father and biological mother and siblings. That God can take care of you today. Don't be despondent. Don't be dismayed. Don't feel like you are not worthy. Don't feel like nothing is working in your favor. I'm here to announce that all things will work for good for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God Almighty is God. In Jesus' name I declare. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Amen.